Hey guys, I'm Roland Tech Fusist, and I've been using the iCode 12 for more than a month and here's how it went. Let's take a look. The iCode 12 is one of the most beautiful smartphones that I've ever seen and used. It looks clean, especially in this white legend edition. It's minimalistic and looks beautiful from all angles. The phone features a silver frame and white glass panel, which is glossy and reflective. The only bad thing is that it's quite slippery, so I would strongly advise you to use the provided case. The BMW stripes on the back don't add or take away anything, and those who are into the cars and the brand itself will appreciate the small attention to detail. The phone is quite large but it weighs just as much as other devices, maybe even less than the likes of Samsung and iPhones. Luckily the large design doesn't mean it's hard to use and strangely this is one of the few devices I could comfortably use with just one hand. The flat sides make the phone really comfortable to use, even with the case on. Regarding ports and buttons, the iQOO 12 sports the volume broker and a power button on the right side and nothing on the left. The top houses a speaker, a microphone and an IR blaster, while the bottom contains the USB-C port, another microphone, a speaker and a SIM card slot. Perhaps the only downside of the iQOO 12 is that it only features IP64 certification and even that is only on the Chinese model, which means it's not as durable as other well-known devices. However, considering it costs a lot less, it's still a great and a welcome addition for peace of mind. The iQOO 12 is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset and it's one of the first devices to come out with the latest and the greatest. My review device sports 12GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. Performance wise, all I can say is that I've never seen, heard or seen any signs of lag or any sluggish behaviour on this device. It's a butter smooth device that works flawlessly without any hiccups or problems. It doesn't easily throttle or heat up, making it an excellent gaming smartphone on a budget. You can play any game for any duration without issue and the only time you'll experience the device getting slightly warmer than usual is when you play more demanding games like Call of Duty. Aside from that, the phone handled everything with ease. Animations are fast and the device remains responsive regardless of what you have open. Browsing the web, watching movies and using social media apps was a breeze and if you're looking for a device that can do it all on a budget, this might just be it. Overall, if you plan to play more demanding games, more to task and consume content, the iQOO 12 will handle it beautifully. The chances of you coming across any issues are highly unlikely and normal day-to-day -day operations will be a breeze with no slowdowns whatsoever. Daiko 12 has a 6.8 inch LTPO AMOLED display that looks bright, vivid and really sharp. It sports a 144Hz refresh rate panel that's fast and responsive and the best thing is that it's variable too, meaning it can conserve battery when using features like the always on display. The bezels are small, making the overall device look modern and stylish. The panel supports HDR10 Plus and has a peak brightness of 3000 nits. It's plenty bright for enjoying HDR content and it's excellent outdoors, even in direct sunlight. I never had an issue with the brightness itself and the colours were uniform and accurate. Watching movies, TV shows and games looked outstanding and the screen was a pleasure for short and long sessions. If you're after a smartphone with a gorgeous display that works in any lighting conditions and environment, the iQOO 12 won't disappoint. When it comes to software, the iCode 12 comes with FunTouch 14 based on the latest Android 14 update. During my use, I received several software and security updates and it looks like the device is receiving timely updates. iCode promises three major Android updates and four years of security patches, making the device an excellent value for the money. There's not much I can say about the software experience other than it's bother smooth. The animations are snappy and quick and this is one of the most customizable operating systems I've ever used. You can literally change every aspect of the system, including the lock screen, animation effects, unlocking effect for the fingerprint sensor and many more. The only thing I found frustrating was that I was unable to turn off Joey Home, which gives you the control center on the home screen. This lets you access various services such as the weather, digital well-being and more. It always shows up in the top right corner of the settings and it can't be removed. Aside from that, the software was always quick, smooth and reliable. The phone handled everything with ease, whether I had multiple apps open in the background played graphics intensive games or did anything else. The phone is extremely well optimized and iQOO 12 is a blazing fast for any task. If you're looking for a device that's swift, will continue receiving three major Android and four years of security updates, lets you customize nearly every aspect of the operating system and doesn't bog down under heavy loads, the iQOO 12 is an excellent value. 
Despite the affordable price tag, the iQOO 12 sports a triple camera setup consisting of a 50 megapixel primary, a 50 megapixel ultra wide, and a 64 megapixel periscope telephoto with three times optical zoom. The front facing camera is housed in a punch hole cut out on the top center of the screen, sporting a 16 megapixel sensor. Straight up, the daylight photo quality from the primary sensor is outstanding. The images contain lots of details, sharpness, and even dynamic range is doing an excellent job. The contrast was always on point and the colors appeared accurate and true to life using the natural setting. Moving over to the ultra wide, the camera takes great photos in general, but the sharpness and the detail takes a small hit, though the colors contrast and even the dynamic range remains spot on. There's not too many bad things I can say and I was quite impressed with the overall quality. Moving over to the periscope telephoto camera, it takes generally excellent photos. The 2 and 3 times optical zoom capability is very handy and the objects retain a lot of detail, have accurate colors and even the dynamic range works well. Some images contain a bit more noise and the sharpness can be lower compared to the primary but the results are usually great and well balanced. The low light performance is equally impressive and the iQOO 12 takes decent images with little noise and great colors. The dynamic range plays an important role and while there can be a slight lens flare in some spots it's not usually a deal breaker or a big issue. The selfies are usually good enough for social media but they're not as impressive as the rear shooters. The portrait look good with realistic bokeh effects and accurate colors but the detail and sharpness takes a deep dive. With that said, if you're looking for a phone that takes excellent photos and features a versatile camera setup that doesn't break the bank, the iQOO 12 is right up there alongside the big name brands. The iQOO 12 uses a graphite enhanced cell that Vivo says should fare better in the long term, resulting in a battery retaining 80% of its capacity after 1600 cycles. These are impressive numbers, but only time will tell how reliable these results are. For the time being, the large 5000 mAh battery holds up extremely well, and I was able to go for a full workday without issues. I played demanding games, browsed the web, and used several social media apps while talking to my friends. I've also watched videos on YouTube and Netflix, and I still managed to end the day with 50% left in the tank. I ended most days on 40-50% to battery left in most cases, making the iQOO 12 one of the longest lasting devices I've ever tested and used. It's really well optimized and it's one of those phones that could even last a full day on a single charge for power users. General users will almost certainly make it to the next day, so if that's something you're after, you got yourself a battery champ. Charging this beast is no easy task, but Weibo equipped the device with 120 watts fast wired charging. I was able to get a full charge in less than 30 minutes, and as you can imagine, this too changed my nightly charging habits. A quick top up in the morning was all it needed to get charged up and power through the rest of the day. Sadly, there's no wireless charging, but given the extremely fast white charging solution, I might be able to forgive the company this one time. Still, it would be great to see on the next generation. So, should you buy the iQOO 12? If you're looking for an excellent all-rounded flagship that costs less than more conventional flagships from brands like Google, Samsung and Apple, the iQOO 12 is an excellent value. It has a large, beautiful and bright display that's great for watching movies, browsing and playing games. The phone performs just like a flagship device and it remains fast and smooth regardless of how many apps you have open or the graphic settings of the most demanding games. The camera takes beautiful photos during the day and night and the better can last for a full day on a single charge. There's not much bad I can say about the iQOO 12, but if I had to point out a few things, it would be that it lacks wireless charging, FunTouch 14 doesn't feel like stock Android, and while there are lots of features to make the iQOO 12 yours, the features could be overwhelming for some. If you're looking for a device that ticks all the boxes and doesn't cost an arm and a leg, the iQOO 12 is a solid flagship, and it's easily one of my favorite devices in 2024. For those who don't like too many features or strongly rely on wireless charging, might have to look elsewhere. Personally, these are things I'm willing to sacrifice at this price point, so I'm happy to give the iQOO 12 a massive thumbs up. And there you have it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. With all that said, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.